It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC C24G1. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons at the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right side. You can see them at the bottom, so they face downwards. There's also a little power LED, and this probably looks kind of a bit blue on the video, but it's actually a nice white colour and it's very unobtrusive. It's a tiny little triangular shape. Um, sort of pinprick design, very small, completely unobtrusive. If you press the first button on the menu, you can select the source used by the monitor, the input source. The next button allows you to select one of the game modes, and, the, and these are explored in the written review. Uh, I'll just quickly go through them now. There's FPS, RTS, Racing, Gamer 1, Gamer 2, and Gamer 3, which offer a bit more flexibility. As I mentioned in the review, I don't much like these, to be honest. Um, I prefer the extra flexibility you get when you don't use them. And they also over-sharpen the image and apply some sort of oversaturation. They un upset colour balance and they do all sorts of things and also lock off various settings in the OSD. So I just don't find them very attractive. I'll just change the desktop background to something a bit more appropriate because there's actually a little aim point crosshair which is added to the screen. You can see there, and that, that's something you get up by just pressing the third button along when you're not in the main OSD system, or before you enter the main OSD system, I should say. So that's sort of a little sort of cheat if you're that, that way inclined and you're playing a game without a crosshair and you want to give yourself a crosshair. The main menu, that's the next button along, is laid out in AOC's usual widescreen style. And there's, a, of course, a power button, and that's the last button there. I'd just like to apologise if there's a little bit of glare on the screen to the right. The reason for this is that I find this OSD particularly difficult to use in the dark because the button labels are not clear at all, they're just basically sort of ingrained little icons that blend in very nicely with the bottom bezel and can barely be seen. In the dark they're completely invisible and there aren't any sort of on-screen button labels associated with the different um, buttons, so when you're in the main OSD system and it's dark, it's really very difficult to navigate through properly. And because it doesn't have a joystick or anything like that, it's not really the most intuitive OSD system. And that's why I've got a little bit of light, just so I can see what I'm actually doing, because it does help. So the first section is luminance, and this allows you to adjust things like the contrast and the brightness, eco mode, and all that does is just set the um, the brightness to a predefined value and then locks out the brightness control so you can just adjust that manually instead. There are three different gamma settings, gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3 as explored in the review. DCR, dynamic contrast ratio, also explored in the review and that's the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor. Image setup, this is greyed out and this does confuse some users, they're like, why can't I activate uh, the image setup menu? It only applies to analog or VGA connections, and it's all optimised automatically for digital connections, such as DisplayPort, as I'm using here. And there's colour setup. This allows you to adjust the colour temperature, so there's user mode, which allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. There is warm, which is the factory default. Normal, which is actually quite cool in its appearance, and cool, which is even cooler in its appearance in terms of colour tone. sRGB, and that's explored in the review. DCB mode, this is dynamic colour boost, and this just oversaturates certain colours. So, if you have this set to full enhance, it actually oversaturates pretty much every colour. It, what, what I mean by oversaturate is it, it pulls them closer to the edge of the gamut, so they look more saturated, but it doesn't increase the size of the colour gamut itself. You therefore compress the shade range and things look quite artificial and some shades just are basically blended into other shades and it looks quite messy. But some people still like the effect anyway. There's nature skin and that sort of selectively oversaturates reds and pinks. Green field which does the same with greens. Sky blue which does the same with blues. Auto detect which is supposed to change based on the content you're running or off, which is my preferred setting. DCB demo, and this just sort of does a um, split screen showing you DCB on versus off, basically. 
Next there's Picture Boost and this controls the bright frame feature of the screen. I've explored this in many videos in the past and I don't really want to have to repeat it uh, here but what it does essentially is puts a little box on the screen and you can control where on the screen that is found and also the size of the frame itself. And this frame, you can adjust the brightness and contrast levels independently of the rest of the screen. The brightness adjustment here does not affect the backlight brightness, so it's not the same as the main brightness control. It is instead a digital brightness adjustment. So you can basically make one section of the screen look different to the rest of the screen with this feature. Next, there's OSD setup. And this allows you to change various options pertaining to the OSD itself. You can change the language it's displayed in, the timeout period, which is how long after the last button press, before the menu will automatically disappear. You can set that between 5 and 120 seconds. DP capability, this is just something which can be set um, for compatibility purposes on older systems. If your system doesn't support DisplayPort 1.2, you won't be able to use FreeSync on this monitor and you will be more limited in terms of the refresh rate as well. So just set that to 1.2, which is the default for most users. But if you're connecting it to a, an older system that doesn't support DP 1.2, you can select 1.1 there instead. You can change the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen. Change the volume of the anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. Change the transparency, so the transparency effect of the OSD. You can increase or decrease that. Break reminder, and this will just put a little message on the screen after an hour to remind you to take a break. And you can just dismiss the message by pressing one of the buttons on the uh, to control the OSD. Next, there's game setting, the more exciting settings on the monitor. This allows you to activate the game mode, which I've already been through with the shortcut key earlier. Shadow control, and I've got the Legon website open so I can show the effect of this more clearly. But this is essentially something that's designed to give you a competitive edge in games to make low-end visibility better and enhance the visibility of enemies in dark areas on the game basically. So 50 is the neutral position. If you increase that even just one up from there to 60, everything looks completely flooded. It even affects black. It doesn't just target the gamma of shades lighter than black, which it really should. It also lightens black significantly. So it, it's pretty useless to be honest, um, because I don't think anyone would like to game with this completely flooded look and it gets quite extreme, so that's Shadow Control 100. If you reduce it further, even one down from 50 to 40, every, you just lose a lot of detail. Um, it sort of gives a very, I don't know, cinematic, sort of eye-catching look, I guess, in some respects, but not accurate at all. There's low input lag, and this is greyed out unless you're running the monitor at a static 60Hz refresh rate. Um, as I explore in the review, input lag is not a problem on this at high refresh rate and if it is greyed out, it's essentially set to on and it's forced on. It doesn't actually have any negative impact being on versus off anyway, whether you're at 60 hertz or not. But uh, So really, don't worry about that too much. If you can set it and you're at 60 hertz, for example, you're using a games console, then just leave it on and don't worry about it. Game colour, and this is another feature which oversaturates the image in a similar way to what I talked about with dynamic colour boost earlier but this has more precision so if you increase it above uh, 10 it increases the saturation much as I described before so it becomes quite extreme if you have it up to 20 and things look really odd uh, but if you can increase that a little bit for a slight effect or you can decrease it and eventually everything will go completely monochrome so it reduces saturation as well if you want to. I prefer to just leave that at the neutral position of 10. Low blue light modes again explored in the review. You can have that set to multimedia which is the weakest, internet which is a little bit stronger, office which is a little stronger again, reading which is a fairly effective low blue light setting. And, and this will make the colour temperature noticeably warmer and it reduces the blue light output from the monitor and that's useful before bed or whenever else you're sort of looking for a more relaxing and less invigorating viewing experience from the monitor. Overdrive, again explored in the review, there's very different settings, off, weak, medium and strong. I kind of prefer medium most of the time but strong has its merits as well on this monitor. FreeSync, and you can have that 
enabled if you're running anything. I mean, if, if you have this connected to an NVIDIA card, you can have FreeSync on, but it isn't going to do anything, I'm afraid. It only works if you actually have the monitor connected to a FreeSync compatible GPU or system. This frame counter, you can have this right up, right down, left down or left up, depending on where on the screen you want it to appear. And this will just give you a readout of the refresh rate of the monitor. So it's not actually a frame rate counter per se, it actually just shows you the refresh rate that the monitor is running at. So if you're not using FreeSync on the monitor, it's not going to be any use to you, it's just going to show you what frame rate you're running the monitor at. So 144 Hz in this case, regardless of what the frame rate's doing. Next there's NBR, Motion Blur Reduction. That's grayed out at the moment because you cannot use that at the same time as FreeSync. So if you disable FreeSync, you can see this. As explored in the review, you can adjust the pulse width by setting the NBR to between 1 and 20 and that affects the brightness of the screen and also the potential motion clarity. So if you have that set to 1, that's the highest brightness but the sort of lowest edge in motion clarity and as you increase that, potential motion clarity increases and the brightness of the screen decreases. All you'll see on the camera when I activate this is some flickering because it does cause the backlight to flicker, it's a strobe backlight function, that's exactly how it works. Um, but the flickering isn't apparent to most users in the same way as it's picked up on the camera, or by the camera, I should say. And it's also more apparent at 120Hz and even more apparent at 100Hz. Um, you can use this setting at 100Hz, 120 or 144Hz with this monitor. Last but not least, there is Extra, and that has various other settings, miscellaneous settings if you prefer. You can select the input used by the monitor. Auto Config is another thing that only applies to analog or VGA connections. An off timer, which will set the monitor to automatically switch off or turn itself on to standby after a number of hours which you set. Image ratio, and that only applies if you're running at non-native resolutions, and you can set that to wide or auto, depending on whether you want the resolution to stretch to fill the entire screen, or whether you're using a non-16 by 9 resolution you want it to look correct without geometric distortion and you don't mind some black bars. DDC slash CI, part of the plug and play functionality for the monitor, just leave that enabled. Um, just a legacy feature for some weird old systems that may have some compatibility issues if this is enabled. Whether you're using it or not, whether you're using software to control the monitor or not, which is what this really relates to, there's no harm in keeping it enabled. And there's an option to reset everything to the factory default. Finally, there is resolution, horizontal frequency and vertical frequency mentioned there. The vertical frequency, if you're using FreeSync, will simply say FreeSync. So it doesn't change according to the frame rate of the content. So that's all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC C24G1. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.